Those of you who saw it, we went live at about 7 a.m., 7.15 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, right after I woke up, after seeing the news of what happened to the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore, Maryland, where the um, Dolly or Dolly cargo ship basically slammed directly into one of the pillars and knocked the bridge down completely, right? This happened not this morning, but yesterday around 1.26 a.m. And there's been a lot of updates since that initial live stream happened. So I just wanted to give you guys a heads up or a update on what happened. There was a power blackout. When we first started the live stream yesterday, there was very, very little information to go on. All we knew was that a cargo ship, a container ship, um, had slammed into the Baltimore Bridge at 1.26 a.m. At 1.30 a.m., there was a, a immediate press conference about it. And, um, they, they said that they were trying to figure out what's going on. There were people on the bridge at the time. There were crews that were doing work on the bridge. There were cars on the bridge and they were in a, an immediate recovery mode to try to find the people that had been on the bridge and to figure out exactly what happened with the ship and why it hit the bridge. There have been a lot of updates again in the last 24 hours about what happened. And I want to talk to you about some of those things. What I do want to start off with though is an email that I got that if you've been on this channel before, you all know that I think of things in a out of the box kind of way. And I look for signs of us being lied to. I'm just going to put it to you like that. And there's a lot of things that just right off the bat yesterday morning with this, this cargo ship hitting this bridge that visually did not make sense based off of the recordings that were there. I had people ask in the live stream, you know, how, who knew to record? Well, there were cameras set up all around the place because it is such a massive bridge. It is something that is a connection from one side of this river to the other. It is a bridge that is used for anything flammable for gas, for hydrogen, for all these different things to cross over because they could not go through tunnels. The bridge is used for when they can't get it on a cargo ship or anything like that. So the bridge is extremely, extremely important. And we talked about it yesterday. That bridge was the second longest in the United States of its type. And I think um, I said it once in the beginning yesterday, but then I forgot to say of its type numerous times, the truss bridge, the kind of bridge that it was, because it now is sitting in the bottom of the river, um, the kind of bridge that it was, the truss bridge was the second longest in the United States, third longest in the world at the time. The bridge has been in existence, I think we said from 1955. I feel like that's the right year. Um, and I do believe that yesterday was its 47 year supposed to be a 47 year like anniversary of the bridge being up. But this email came through from Tammy and I want to read this email to you. And then we're going to talk about the updates of actually, you know, what they are telling us happened from this update. This was a a email that came through from somebody who lives in Baltimore. One of the Facebook groups that she belongs to is called Baltimore Past and Present Photos. And this was posted on this Facebook group. Now, please keep in mind, this is not anything that I am saying is actual and factual. But when I read this, my thought process was of the same line when this originally happened. So I'm reading this to you. Again, this is sent to me from a Facebook group by Tammy. But it, it talks a lot about things that I think the majority of us are thinking about what actually happened with this cargo ship and this bridge. But okay, here we go. So according to this, multiple intel sources, Baltimore Bridge collapse was an absolutely brilliant strategic attack on US critical infrastructure, most likely cyber, and our intel agencies know it. In information warfare terms, they just divided the US along the Mason-Dixon line exactly like the Civil War. Second busiest strategic roadway in the nation for hazardous material now down for four to five years, which is how long they say it will take to recover. Bridge was built specifically to move hazardous material, fuel, diesel, propane gas, nitrogen, highly flammable materials, chemicals, and oversized cargo that cannot fit in the tunnels. That supply chain is now crippled. Make no mistake, this was an extraordinary attack in terms of planning, timing, and execution. The two critical components on that bridge are the two load-bearing pylons at each end closest to the shore. They are bigger, thicker, and deeper than anything else. These are the anchor points, and they knew that hitting either one of them would be a fatal wound to the integrity of the bridge. Half a mile of the bridge went into the river. Likely, you will have to build a new one. Also caused so much damage of the, structural of the structural integrity of the bottom concrete part that you cannot see and won't know until they take the wreckage apart. Structural destruction likely absolute. 
attack perfectly targeted. They have figured out how to bring us down. As long as you stay away from the teeth of the U.S. military, you can pick the U.S. apart. We were arrogant and ignorant, lethal combination. Obama said they would fundamentally change America, and they did. We are in a free fall ride on a roller coaster right now, no brakes, just picking up speed. The footage shows the cargo ship never got in the approach lane in the channel. You have to be in the channel before you get into that turn. Location was precise slash deliberate. Chose a bend in the river where you have to slow down and commit yourself. Once you are committed in the area, there's not enough room to maneuver. Should have had a harbor pilot to pilot the boat. You are not supposed to traverse any obstacles without the harbor pilot. They chose a full moon so they would have maximum tidal shift, rise and fall. Brisk flow in that, wa in that river on a normal day and have had a lot of rain recently so water was already moving along at a good pace. Hit with enough kinetic energy to knock the load-bearing pylon out from under the highway, which fatally weakens the span, and then 50% of the bridge fell into the water. All these factors, when you look at it, this is how you teach people how to do this type of attack, and there are so few people left in the system who know this. We have a junior varsity team on the field. Now, again, this is an email I'm reading to you that was sent to me. Tremendous navigational obstruction. Huge logistical nightmare to clean this up. Number of dead is tragic, but not the whole measure of the attack. That kind of bridge constantly under repair, always at night because there is so much traffic and they cannot obstruct, obstruct that during the day. So concern is for repair guys who are on foot out of their vehicles working who may now be in the water. 48 degrees in the water at this time of year. When you choke off Baltimore, you have cut the main north-south hazardous corridor I-95 in half. Now has to go around the city or go someplace else. To move some of that cargo through the tunnel, you may be able to get a permit, but those are slow to get and require an escort system that is expensive and has to be done at night. For every $100 that goes into the city, 12 comes from shipping. I believe this will cripple the city of Baltimore at a time when they do not have the resources to recover. This is what was sent to me from a, uh, a viewer, Tammy P., that was on a Facebook uh, group that she belongs to, Baltimore Past and Present Photos. And a lot of this stuff made sense to me. Uh, when, what, Again, when we went live yesterday morning, it had just happened. It was a few hours in. It was still dark. Light was just coming up. There was not a ton of information. But just looking at the video of the impact, you could see that it looked like the all the lights and everything on the ship went off. Then you saw a puff of smoke come up from the ship. And now that is being said, that's because they were able to get the power back on some sort of generator. And the puff of smoke was because that, that, that section hasn't been used in forever is what they're saying. And then the lights came back on, but they, they're telling us that because the boat was already so close to the bridge that it did not have time once the power went out to, to turn it and steer it differently. Now, if you watch the original video of what happened, and now this is me, I have no um, education in the boating, the, the cargo ship containers and bridges, none of that stuff. This is just me, a girl watching a video and seeing what I saw without having any sort of knowledge on how these things work. I can tell you a cargo ship, the size of that thing, that that thing was, when they said the initial power went out at 126, there is no way that that boat was aimed in the right direction before the power went out to miss that pylon. Visually speaking, from all the angles of the videos I've seen, from pictures I have seen, it does not look like that boat would have made it past that pylon if even if the power had not gone out, as they are claiming. It was too close. You have this much space, and the boat is right here. Why? If you have this much space, why would the boat not be in the middle? Now, they did have tugboats that took it out into the big open part. There, there was a, a tugboat in the front and one in the back to help get it to where it needed to be. But once those tugboats left, it was up to the cargo ship itself to set its course, maintain its course, to get through this, to move on its way to Sri Lanka, which is where it was headed, right? So let me read you. This is what they're saying on USA Today. This is their, here's the information that's come out and all this other stuff. I do want to say that we knew yesterday morning during the live stream that there were numerous men working on the bridge. They were filling in potholes and stuff like that. And when that bridge collapsed, we saw the cars fall with it. We know the people went in with it as well. They were able to pull two out of the water. But then after, I want to say... I can't remember exactly what time I saw that they had suspended the search for the other missing people. Um, I want to say maybe five or six hours later, they suspended the search for the other missing people. And now those, all those men and maybe women are presumed dead. An article I saw this morning stated that most of those workers were of um, Hispanic descent from Guatemala, Venezuela, 
and I think there was another country that were there working with a construction crew doing the pothole filling, fixing the potholes on this bridge when the bridge collapsed and they were, their lives have been termed, uh, deemed lost. They have given up looking for these men. They said that the company they work for, these men were here working to send money back home to their families. So they were hardworking men is what they're saying. Now, according to this, um, this, this article that's on Yahoo News USA Today, it's like a story. They've, gave, they've given it a lot of fluff, whatever else. But there are some things in here that I want to talk about. So according to this, the ship itself was built in Korea in 2015, 980 foot long ship. And uh, it was carrying shipping containers that they said were empty. Okay. At this point, those shipping containers were empty. There were 20 two crew members aboard the ship when it left all of them Indian nationals that's what they are saying right now um, it says here that Houthi rebels had been attacking cargo ships in the Red Sea so the Dali's captain planned to take the longer route for safety last year it said the ship sailed a distance very nearly the sum of the Earth's circumference hauling cargo to and from Asia. Now it says the Dolly can cruise around 22 miles per hour uh, with the captain, a harbor pilot and an apprentice pilot. They kept the speed around nine miles per hour though. So before the, the, the collision, they were at roughly nine miles per hour. And then the tugboats cast off their lines and they returned to their port for the next assignment. So again, there were two tugboats, um, Aaron McAllister and Brid uh, Bridget McAllister. They were the ones that were in the tugboats moving the, what is it called? Tug, sibling tugs, Eric, Eric and Bridget McAllister. It doesn't say what their company name was, but those were the tugboats that were moving the dolly at the time, one in the front, one in the back. And then according to this, um, the course was going to take them down the Patapsco River, which is what the Francis Scott Key Bridge, that, that bridge in Baltimore, crossed from one side of the Patapsco to the other. On its way down the river, the ship would slip beneath the Francis uh, Scott Key Bridge, and it would be a straight shot the way they were going. Now, according to this, the bridge opened in 1977. I was off by a few years. I apologize for that. And we talked about it yesterday. That bridge is named in honor of the man who wrote the Star Spangled Banner. That bridge is built yards away from where the... Um, the British attack on U.S. soil occurred that Francis Scott Key was able to witness and therefore penned the Star Spangled Banner from witnessing this attack. Um, it says here the bridge is nearly 11 miles long. That's 1.6. Why does it say 11 miles long? including its approach ramps and roadways. Okay, the bridge is nearly 11 miles long. Its height meant massive container ships like the Dolly could pass safely beneath. Massive ships could pass safely beneath. Again, you have the pylon here, pylon here, all this open space, and this massive boat that has been, has been doing this since 2015. It's not a new boat. It's not their first time out. It's the same crew that traversed the entire circumference of the Earth just last year. For some reason, before their power went out, they were still on a trajectory path for that pylon. They were not on a trajectory path to go through the middle uh, underneath this bridge like they should have been. For those of you who saw the video, you can, you can tell it was aimed in the wrong direction to begin with. Now, it said the, um, the bridge that fell, 30,000 vehicles a day go across, just under 900,000 vehicles, whether it's um, cars or commercial trucks or anything like that, crossed in 2023 alone. Uh, most of them, a lot of them, SUVs to gasoline tankers and trucks hauling propane. Talked about it yesterday. With this bridge going out, it's going to be a very difficult time for the, you know, today and the coming days of people who need to get fuel and things like that. Because now, instead of having that easy entry over the Francis Scott Key Bridge, you're going to have to get it from outside sources, bring it in. You can't go through the two tunnels that lead into Baltimore um, because the, it's not safe. And that's why they built the bridge to begin with. Now, the bridge is maintained and owned by Maryland Transportation Authority, which we talked about yesterday. Their last federal inspection was in 2021, and it was listed in fair overall condition fair overall condition now they say the maryland officials say the bridge crosses the river less than 100 yards again from where francis scott key witnessed the bombardment of fort mchenry on september 12 1814 inspiring the words to what we know is now the national anthem now officials began building the 60 million dollar bridge after the first harbor crossing the baltimore harbor tunnel reached capacity again they needed something where these more flammable trucks and these bigger trucks and things could cross that could not fit through the um the tunnels and weren't safe to go through tunnels now the ship itself according to this um let, let me let me see how there's a lot in this article here, and I'm trying to give you the stuff that actually matters, not all this fluff they're throwing in. Um, 
So it says, even at low speed, a ship nearly a thousand feet long moves with tre tremendous inertia. This is according to Captain Alan Post, who is the deputy, deputy superintendent at Texas A&M Maritime Academy in Galveston. It changes direction slowly, which in itself lets you know that that bridge, that boat should have been on its initial path in the beginning. It should not have been waiting to the last second to try to change course. They said that the initial loss of power happened at 1.26 p.m. There was no loss of power ahead of that, right? If that's the case, they were this close to that bridge before they ever had any sort of power outage. And at this close to that bridge, power outage or not, they would have been in the wrong trajectory to go underneath that bridge. That wide open space that they had still aimed at that pylon. Now the ship, um, 95,000 tons empty is what that ship weighed. Just so you know. Now, according to this, I'm trying to find the stuff that's super important here. Okay. Live stream video of the bridge at the time shows the ship's navigation and warning lights blinking out around 1 24 AM. The ship begins turning to starboard uh, to the to the right when facing forward, turning starboard so that way. In the video, some of the ship's lights return. Heavy smoke begins billowing from the ship's exhaust stack, and then the lights blink again. Now, the um, executive director of the American Pilots Association, a gentleman named Clay Diamond, said the ship suffered a complete loss of propulsion. Diamond's association represents the Maryland agency that licenses its state's pilots, blah, blah, blah. The pilots are responsible for guiding ships and their crews into and out of commercial ports, each one with its own unique channels, tidal flows, navigational hazards, whatnot. Each pilot serves aboard ships, then trains for many additional years before taking the jobs. Pilots are considered to be the most highly trained mariners in the world. Pilots are considered to be the most highly trained mariners in the world, yet on the path that this dolly ship was on, with the space this wide open, they were still aimed this close to a pylon. Nothing else in the water with them. There were no other boats they had to skirt around. There was nothing else going on. So again, I am not saying that this was intentional, but I cannot bring myself to say that it was not just based off of everything that I have seen. There were a ton, I mean, ton of videos up yesterday about what had happened, most of them from news channels. So I didn't watch them because news channels are going to say, oh, well, you know, power outage, they did the best they could. Unfortunately, here's what happened. Well, you know, y'all know what I'm saying. So we're, we're looking at this from different angles because that's the way it needs to be looked at. Not from the angle that every news outlet is going to say you need to look at it from because one, they don't want to terrify Americans, right? Especially people in Baltimore right now and say, oh no, this was done on purpose. But if you sit there and think about the things that have happened over the past year, two years, three years since 2020, all of the things we've had happen with explosions and fires and train derailments and um, just all of it. It, it starts to, again, look like a timed warfare, if you will. And the fact that this bridge going out is such a huge cutoff for not just the people of Baltimore, but everywhere out of it. So um, we'll call it like an octopus or something, if you will, with tentacles. So if the Baltimore bridge is the octopus, like the, the head of it or the middle of it, and all these tentacles is supposed to go out and about, you cut that, that bridge out, there goes the head, the tentacles can't do anything. So now you have it so that you can't get stuff, you know, going northeast, southwest, northeast, southeast, southwest, whatever, because the bridge is gone. You're going to have to find new ways to make this work, which is going to mean everything is going to go up in price, right? Because you're now having to pay more to move it by, by air or by land when by sea or by river is no longer an option in that area. It would cost too much money to turn any other area into a new port, if you will, to make up for the fact that this port in Baltimore is now going to be kind of sort of useless, if you will. It would cost too much money to do that. It's going to take years to rebuild this bridge. When's the last time you saw a bridge built like that? It doesn't happen, especially not one that is supposed to carry close to a million cars and trucks over it yearly, especially with hazardous materials. It's not going to happen overnight. This is something that's going to take a ton of time. It is something that's going to cost a lot of money. I can tell you taxes are probably going to go up in the area. It's going to end up being a toll bridge if it wasn't already a toll bridge to recoup the money that will now be spent to build this bridge. It's going to be kind of a shit show in Baltimore for a while. And on the flip side of that, the people who live in that area are really going to feel the sting more than anybody from this accidental, you know, collapsing of a bridge. I'm just, okay. So let me get back to this. Um, according to this, 
the pilot asked the captain to get the engine back online and they they weren't able to do that so the pilot took all the action he could that's the quote from diamond he tried to steer to keep the ship in the channel he also did drop the ship's anchor port to slow the ship and guide the direction neither one was enough the ship never did regain its engine power so dropping the anchor generally speaking sounds like it's something that would stop a boat right but however if you're dropping an anchor and you're already going too fast you have a current moving again against you dropping that anchor is all for show at that point it's not going to stop the boat i know i don't know a ton about boats but i go out on boats every once in a while and i can tell you if you try to drop an anchor while you're moving all it's going to do is fling you in the direction that the anchor ends up catching right so it's going to twist you or move you if if it catches at all there's nothing that shows if this anchor caught or did not caught did not catch y'all don't worry about me um diamond said the ship initially retained some maneuverability while it was coasting but lost its speed he said the ship that big quickly becomes subject to wind and water movement without propulsion this was a complete this is a quote this was a complete blackout of all the power on the ship so that's unusual okay number one so that's unusual of course this happened at the worst possible location what are the odds right there was no way to control the ship once the engine had had a blackout what are the odds right now according to this dally's crew did broadcast a mayday call now think about it your power goes out at 124 you think you've got it back on at 126 you realize you don't have the power back on so you broadcast a mayday you are literally three minutes away from hitting a bridge that cars are on people are on everything else so they they do they call this mayday and the people um, receive the mayday and they say, Hey, listen, get, get everybody shut down the bridge on this side and that side. Don't let any, excuse me, don't let any more cars on the bridge, but they weren't able to get the people on the bridge off the cars that were already on the bridge. The people that were working on the bridge, they were not able to get them off in time. So workers, um, saw the ship approaching police called for traffic to be shut down, crossing the bridge. Again, this is after the mayday was, uh, was given out by the Dalek ship. I need, this is a quote, I need one of you guys on the south side, one of you guys on the north side, hold all traffic on the key bridge. There's a ship approaching that just lost their steering, so until we get that under control, we've got to stop all traffic. This is a worker who radioed to colleagues according to the emergency radio archiving system uh, broadcastify, that's the name of it. Just make sure no one's on the bridge right now. Now, according to officials, they're saying that's what saved lives. The mayday from the dolly, and then this gentleman uh, using the broadcastify to say, hey, listen, shut down the bridge on both sides. They say that saved lives. If not, there would have been more people on the bridge when that bridge collapsed, right? These people are heroes. This is a according to Westmore, the governor of Maryland. Um, we're thankful that between the May Day and the collapse, we had officials who were able to begin to stop the flow of traffic so more cars were not up on the bridge. But that radio call included one other key message. I'm not sure where, but there's a crew up there. The worker on the radio call said, you might want to notify whoever the foreman is, see if we can get them off the bridge temporarily. At 1.27 a.m., the ship plowed into the bridge's southern support tower. Gravity took over. So from 1.24 to 1.27, you literally have three minutes from the beginning of the unusual power outage because again the the guy who was over all kinds of mariner stuff or whatever you want to call it i don't remember what they said he was over but for him to say that they lost their power and that's not usual i tried to google how often does a cargo ship lose total power and literally nothing comes up you see it on cruise ships where they say oh we've lost some sort of power but a generator kicks in something happens where they are able to regain power it is not something that is heard of very often so again for this empty cargo ship to not be on the correct path to begin with, to not be in the area it needed to be in, to have a complete and total blackout three minutes before um, it would have hit a bridge is, is suspicious to me at best, okay? Now, people were coming out yesterday going, oh, it's the cabal, it's the Ukrainian at the helm, it's this, it's that, and whatever else. I have no proof of any of it, just so we're all fully aware, so I cannot say that is what happened. I can tell you that me personally, chick with a, a camera and a microphone who looks at a bunch of stuff, I can tell you from videos I saw that it does not look like that ship, even if it had never had a power outage, even if it had regained full or um, kept full power, that ship did not look like it was in the correct path to make it underneath that bridge without some sort of incident. So 
That is all I'm going to say. I, as a driver, if I am in my car and I'm headed towards a bridge, right? An overpass, if you will. And I can see the concrete pile on here. I can see the concrete pile on here. And this is my lane. If I am all the way over here, I am nowhere near the lane I need to be in. I should not be surprised when my dumb ass slams into a pylon underneath an overpass, correct? So for the ship's captain, who's somebody who is supposed to train, uh, work on the ship for years, train before they ever get to pilot it, do all these different things, for them to not be in the correct channel, the correct pathway, even three minutes before where power went out for the very first time, that says a lot to me, and I'm just going to leave it at that. Um, now, two miles away in the port, once the Mayday call was given, two miles. So this boat had two miles from where uh, they left and the tugboats left them to get into the correct pathway, the correct um, channel, if you will, and still didn't do it. Eric McAllister, the one, one of the tugboats, said they flipped a hard U-turn and went racing the two miles to catch up to this, this cargo ship. But at that point, it was too late. They, um, they did say that, uh, hold on, let me see what this is. There's people talking about they felt the, the, the impact, people in the area around, they felt this massive impact. Obviously, it's going to feel like some sort of earthquake or explosion or whatnot, and you're going to want to walk out your door at 1.30 in the morning to see what's going on, especially if it woke you up. And according to this, a worker radio dispatched the old, whole bridge just fell down. In a shower of sparks, the bridge fell across the Dolly's bow, bow, bow? B-O-W, bow when it's a boat, right? Yeah, bow, with other sections splashing into the channel. And just as a reminder, this is what it looked like. This is how close they were. Again, you have so much space and right there is where they hit. It doesn't, it doesn't add up. Two plus two should always equal four. One plus three equals four. Two plus two equals four. It should always be that way. If, if the math is mathing, it should always come out to the same, the same equation or the same whatever. And this just doesn't do it for me. So Unlike some other bridge designs, steel truss bridges are prone to catastrophic failures. Well, it's convenient that they picked the steel truss bridge to, uh, you know, accidentally run into and knowing that it would have a catastrophic failure because they're not technically built as sturdily as other ones, right? Um, officials have documented more than 500 of them in the United States alone in the past decade. The main reason, they're one continuous structure with each segment depending on the other. Still, experts say there was no way any bridge would have sur survived the Dolly's impact. I mean, it's a 90 thousand ton um ship a aimed at a, a little piece of concrete it's not a little piece but a piece of concrete that concrete's not going to really hold up that well to that we've seen uh over the past year i can't remember even where this was what river it was so there's probably no point in bringing this up but i remember there was a ship that got caught in oh delaware river that feels wrong where he had it had the the containers that fell off the ship and it had the corn and corn oil in it, and I cannot remember where it was. Something, something, lock and lock. Dang it, y'all, I don't remember. It is what it is. But there have been a lot of issues with boats and waterways lately. This one just happened to be a little more catastrophic than any of the other ones. Now, even as the, the bridge was still collapsing, it says a swarm of rescue boats, including the two McAllister tugs, were racing to the scene. Within minutes, they were joined by the Coast Guard and other vessels. This is when the um, state of emergency was declared for Maryland, for Baltimore specifically. On the bridge, a group of eight workers had been repairing asphalt at the time. Two were rescued. We talked about this yesterday morning. It's all the information we had. Two were rescued. One was unharmed. One was in very serious condition. This was according, again, to the Maryland Transportation Secretary, Paul Whitefield. Uh, the other six workers were still missing as of Tuesday evening, and they did call off the search for those workers, I, I believe it was five to six hours after the initial, um, after not after the initial impact, after we had our live stream yesterday morning around 7.15, they called off the search for those workers. It says here, the Guatemalan Ministry of Foreign Affairs confirmed two of the missing were from Guatemala, and the other four were from Mexico, Honduras, and El Salvador. To hear the words, the key bridge has collapsed is shocking and heartbreaking, Moore said. Now, later that morning, President Joe Biden would address the country. He noted the search would be agonizing for families of the missing. I know, he said, every minute in that circumstance feels like a lifetime. So Biden spoke on it, just so we're all fully aware. Now, the Dally's owner said there were no reports of pollution leaking from the ship. The search for survivors in the water that was 46 to 48 degrees was another matter. At 7.30 p.m., they called off the rescue effort, not just for the night, but for good and switched to recovery mode. So I'm off on the time frame. It was 12 hours after. It felt like it was shorter, but 
12 hours after we went live with it yesterday morning, um, they called off the search for the people. Based on the length of time that we've gone on the search, the extensive search efforts that we put into it, the water temperature, this is according to Coast Guard Rear Admiral Shannon in Gilraith uh, in the news conference. At this point, we do not believe that we're going to find any of these individuals still alive. So the question now is what happens with this bridge? What happens with the cleanup? What happens with absolutely everything else? Because it's going to take a very long time to clean. It's gonna take a very long time to rebuild. Um, Biden, of course, noted he's been across the bridge numerous times, Maryland, Delaware, he's in that area a lot, going to get his chocolate ice cream, if you will. Um, Biden has vowed to rebuild the bridge. So I don't know if that means Biden is going to put uh, uh, federal government money towards building the bridge and getting it back up and running, or uh, if that means that he's just talking and it is what it is. Hopefully something will be done to help that area, the people of Baltimore, the people of Maryland, get that bridge back up and running. Still uncertain is the fate of cargo ships stuck inside the harbor, because keep in mind, there were other boats there. This was not the only boat in the area. There are other cargo ships that were trying to get into the harbor, get out of the harbor to make their deliveries. So again, you're going to see that this is going to be a longer lasting, longer reaching clusterfuck, if you will, of, of things because of the delay in getting your supplies, delay in getting fuel, delay in getting food, delay in getting cars. Don't, I mean, you have to think everything that could possibly go into a port is now going to have to find some other way to get to where it was going. According to this, um, let's see. Experts say the collapse will force shippers to use other ports, potentially lengthening delivery times and raising costs. As I've already said, this is going to be more than just, oh, no, we have to rebuild a bridge. And unfortunately, lives are lost. This is going to be a there is going to be um, more pockets getting hit, more people feeling the sting of this when it comes to uh, not being able to find the things they need. And when they do find them having to pay substantially more because of how they got to where they needed to be. Because trucks are going to cost more, getting it there by air, certain things can't be flown in. It's Again, it's going to be a huge, huge issue with everything. But we needed to have this update. We needed to talk about this. Again, the email that was sent to me by Tammy from the Facebook group, Baltimore Past and Present Photos, whoever wrote that post, um, they made a lot of really good points in there. When you choke off Baltimore, you have cut the main north-south hazardous corridor, I-95, in half. Now you have to go around the city or go somewhere else. To move some of that cargo through the tunnel, you may be able to get a permit, but again, those are slow and require an escort system. It's expensive and it has to be done right. This will cripple the city of Baltimore at a time when they do not have the resources to recover, which I think is one of the most important parts. The fact that it will, it will cripple a lot of these, th a lot of things. Um, and I think it's, it's important to keep that in mind in, especially in that area, if you're trying to travel and you're stuck in traffic and everything else, keep in mind, nobody wants to be there. It's not just you who is feeling the, the effects of this bridge going out. It's going to be everybody in that area. Now, there, I'm going to put a couple links in the pinned comment after this is over so you can see that they do have... Um, some minute by minute stuff they've they've got I'm actually going to put a pin or a link to a reddit that I looked up because again I was curious so I went to reddit because a lot of times people over there know some stuff I went to reddit uh, on ask engineers right and it was I said the question was marine engineering question how is it possible for a cargo ship to lose power and destroy a bridge and there's a whole lot of information here from people who are in that sort of field that may give some more answers but even the people in this the ones who who have knowledge and, and are using jargon that i i need a dictionary to figure out what the hell they're talking about even they are saying that this still does not make sense at the speed the boat was going the the timing of when the power was lost the angle of the boat the trajectory of the boat the fact that they weren't anywhere near the channel they needed to be in when this happened a lot of those things are they look they look wonky but for a lot of people out there they're just going to see the news and go oh it was an accident okay and they're going to move on about their day it's not going to occur to them to question the things that they're being told so that's why we're here scroll tribe because we question everything that that's why we get along we question everything nothing should ever be taken at face value because face value is how you end up with your head in the sand suffocating and not knowing what's happening in the world around you so we have to question everything. Now, if it comes out that they can prove, actually factually prove 100% to where my brain and my mind and my heart go, okay, that it was an accident, I'll be the first one to tell you that I shouldn't have questioned it. But as of right now, I don't see that happening personally.
just so we're all fully aware. So that is the update as of right now of what is going on. Lives have been lost. The search for the bodies has been called off. The bridge is going to take forever to repair. It's going to cost a hell of a lot of money. If it costs $60 million in 1977, I can't even imagine how much it's going to cost now. Also, the odds they build a truss bridge again, very small. So you're going to have to pay even more, will take even longer. It's just, like I said, it's a clusterfuck. It's a whole thing right now. But I will put links to the USA Today article that is more like a, a book. They wrote like a little fluffy novel with some stuff in it. I'll put a link to this Reddit, Ask Engineers, because there's a lot of good stuff in there. And then there's this other random link to like a timeline of what they say happened. And again, a lot of stuff happened in three minutes, just so we're all fully aware. Um, I'll put that in the pinned comment as well once the live stream is over and YouTube will allow me to get in there and pin some stuff. So. Thank you all for hanging out with me for this live stream. Sorry I didn't get to everybody's live chat, but in order to get through it, we had to focus on the, the task at hand. So that's what we have done. There will be more videos coming later today and tomorrow, um, and I will keep an eye on this, obviously, to see exactly what's going on, see if they end up finding any of the bodies of the missing people, see if anything comes about with the, the cargo ship itself, the, the operators or the pilots or whatever, and I'll give you guys updates on that when it comes through. So I love you all immensely. Have a fabulous rest of your hump day. That's about it. I'll see y'all later. Bye, guys.